بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سالار خان ہیئر اینڈ ٹو ڈے وی سی سم ایگزامپلس آن دی زیڈ ٹرانسفارم سو دیز آر بیسیکلی سم ویری ویری سمپل ایگزامپلس دیٹ آئی ٹیکن اینڈ می بی یو نو یو کڈ سی دا بیسک اسٹینڈرڈ سگنلس بٹ وائی ہیو آئی ٹیکن دیم سو ان دا نیکسٹ ویڈیو یو ول سی دیٹ آئی یوز دیم impulse function and shifted impulse I use very often so that is already recorded so I said that if I am using it again and again so let's say first we see it okay so let's say the first example is that I say that my x of n is a unit step signal x of n is equal to u of n so what would be the corresponding uh, z transform so we already know that a to the power n u of n a to the power n into u of n has a corresponding z transform equal to 1 over 1 minus a z inverse with the region of convergence as z absolute greater than a. And this region of convergence you would all always see this is a positive number and why is this because this represents the radius of a circle and the radius of a circle positive negative you could say this would be the absolute the magnitude of it. Fine. So from this property, from that property, you can already deduce the corresponding uh, 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 what z transform of it, and that would be one over one minus z inverse with the region of convergence z absolute greater than one. Why? Because a is equal to one in this case. Or you can use, of course, the standard formula. And I believe you could do that yourself that x of z would be the summation n running from negative infinity to positive x of n into z to the power negative n. So I, I wrote it directly on this basis. You could do it by this formula. Anyways, this is the first. The second is let's say the unit uh, impulse signal delta of n which is my x of n. So for this what would be the corresponding uh, 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 Fourier uh, z transform so this would be summation n running from z uh, n running from a negative infinity to positive x of n is delta of n and then we have z to the power negative n so now we know from the shifting property of this impulse signal that if you have a delta of n minus n naught multiplied to x of n uh, with a summation from uh, with any summation n running from negative v to positive let's say so this would be equal to the signal x of n at where at the value where impulse is located so n is equal to n naught fine so over here the signal is z of minus n so z to the power minus n at n equal to 0 so which implies z to the power 0 and this would be equal to 1 so now have a look uh, this uh, the impulse has z transform of 1 so what would be the corresponding ROC the corresponding ROC would be the entire z plane why because this is independent of the value of z so the ROC is the entire z plane and what's the z plane so you know that very well we have an imaginary axis we have a real axis and entire z plane including zero and infinity fine okay the next the third so it's quite hot today so therefore i'm having a little speed you know and 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 what these are simple examples so the speed doesn't matter of course okay anyways let's say the third example is a shifted impulse x of n is equal to what x of n is equal to delta of n minus one so you write it please wait it's quite hot very hot today x of n is equal to delta of n minus 1 which means what this is a shifted impulse and this shifted impulse is located where this is located at n is equal to plus 1 this is located at this is 0 this is 1 so this is the impulse located over here if this is your n axis so the corresponding z transform is again the same so x of z not the same in the same way n running from negative infinity to positive delta of n minus 1 
uh, and z to the power negative n so again using the shifting property so i will look n naught over here is equal to one so we would have z to the power negative n where at n equal to one right so which means z to the power negative one which you could say one over z fine so now the roc you, could, you do not need to multi you do not need to put that uh, limits over here r and this and negative infinity and positive you know this is just simple you've got it so you could say that it could depend on any value of z without you know z equal to zero right so the roc could be what you could write it directly from here that the roc is entire z plane except for z equal to zero because that's the pole of the function over there the it would become infinite the fourth let's say is another shifted impulse for the left side x of n is delta of n plus one so now this means that this is an impulse located at a negative one right so now what would be the corresponding transform would be again in the similar way uh, and you have a delta of n plus 1 and z to the power negative n. Again from the shifting the sampling property you have z to the power negative n this time our n naught is negative 1 so which means z to the power negative of negative 1 so this would be equal to z. Again this is the Fourier transform of this the ROC in this case is again entire z plane except for what? except for z equal to infinity because that's the pole of the function over there the function becomes infinite and that is again another simple example fine if you have the combination of these two if you have the combination of these two if x of n is delta of n plus 1 plus delta of n minus 1 so this is the linearity property although we've not seen it we will see it but you could directly say from here that x of z would be what for this we have z for, for that we have 1 over z so this would become z square plus 1 over z the roc would be what the entire z plane except for both 0 and infinity roc is z plane except z equal to 0 and infinite have a look you've seen the properties uh, no we've not seen we see uh, maybe in the next video right yes the, in the next video we see the properties of the uh, ROC so maybe I upload that before this or maybe after this but you link this this video to the next video okay you see for a right-sided signal what happens you see for a left-handed signal what happens you see for a double-sided signal what happens you see for a finite duration signal what happens so these are the examples that we're seeing and and you link that to the properties so you will understand both in a very effective manner you will see when to include zero when to exclude zero when to include infinity when to exclude it fine so you have to link these two videos Anyways, the next, the example number six is x of n. This, these are the book examples, okay? The two that were remaining. x of n is seven times one over three to the power n u of n minus six times one over two to the power n u of n. So have a look. If you need to find the corresponding z transform, you could see directly from this formula a to the power n u of n a to the power n u of n and then from the multiplication property you multiply a scaling factor directly to it right so how do you do it let's say uh, let's say where should i do it over here so over there i would do another example let's say i have x of z so 7 i take outside i have a summation entering from negative infinity so i i write it from a from a zero to positive infinity fine and i have a one over three and, and let's say I also have a z inverse and then hold to the power n. Isn't it like this? It is. Right? And then I say a minus 6 and then I include what? A summation n running from 0 to infinity. And you know how I'm doing this, right? So 1 over 2 z inverse to the power n. And now we know a formula again. We know a formula 
that if we have uh, if we have what uh, that if we have a summation that is n runs from 0 to uh, infinity uh, uh, a to the power n so this is equal to 1 over 1 minus a right so we apply this formula over here we apply this formula over here, the 7 is the constant that would come over here and then you have a 1 over 1 minus a and this your a is 1 over 3 and then you have, and did I make a mistake? No, 1 over minus a, right, yes, so a you have a z inverse over here as well, fine. And then you have a minus 6 times 1 over 1 minus 2 times z inverse and of course you could leave it over here and you could uh, solve it as well you could solve it as well so how do you solve it let's say first if I talk about the ROC of it so the ROC we talk from here and we say that uh, z absolute should be greater than 1 over 3 right right z absolute should be greater than 1 over 3 for here z absolute should be greater than 1 over 2 which means for the overall signal for the overall signal now we would take the intersection of the two so which means that this is if the equation so the this is the ROC that z absolute should be greater than 1 over 2 you could further simplify it as well you could further simplify it as well and you could maybe get the the step as this you could say uh, or, or if I do both the steps so I've written it over here for myself I have a 1 minus 3 by 2 z inverse right and then you have a 1 minus 1 over 3 z inverse and into 1 minus 1 over 2 z inverse fine and then this is further equal to uh, z into z minus 3 by 2 divided by z minus 1 over 3 into z minus 1 over 2. So this is the final result with the final ROC that z absolute is greater than 1 over 2. Fine, of course you could draw the graphs for yourself. The z absolute represents what? A radius of a circle. If it says greater, you just shade that area greater than that. Let's see the last example for this video because it's very hot. So the seventh example is again a book example x of n is 1 over 3 whole power n sine of pi by 4 n u of n and the corresponding z transform is unknown. So, so what can I do it? I could write it in terms of exponential functions. If I say 1 over 3 to the power n I already have over here and, and for sine I represent it as exponential of j pi by 4 n minus exponential of minus j pi by 4 n n we have it, right? Yes, we have it n. And this is whole divided by 2 j and, and you have a u of n as well. Yes, so this we use the Euler formula. Now what do I have? Now what do I have? So I could now take it very easily, the, the, the z transform or yes or I could further even simplify it as well. If I take the n to be the overall power of it. So if I take uh, you know x of n, let's say we simplify it one further step. Let's say I have 1 over 2j. 1 over 2j right and then I have a 1 over 3 exponential of j pi by 4 and this is whole raised to the power n and, and of course u of n as well and then I have a minus 1 over 2j again and then I have a 1 over 3 again and then I have an exponential of negative j pi by 4 and this is raised whole to the power u n into u of n right right so so now my corresponding this would imply what that the corresponding x of z this is equal to so 1 over 2j i would keep outside of the summation 1 over 2j i, I would keep outside a summation and u of n i would say n running from 0 to infinity right and i would say a 1 over 3 exponential of j pi by 4 
into z inverse right into z inverse whole to the power n fine and then a minus 1 over 2j and then a summation n running from 0 to infinity 1 over 3 exponential of minus j pi by 4 z to the power minus 1 whole to the power n so summation n running from 0 to infinity again the same formula a to the power n would be 1 over 1 minus a so this would come out to be x of z is equal to 1 over 2j you already have and then you have 1 over 1 minus a and you have a, a is this thing. Right? Right. Exponential minus j pi by 4 z inverse. So this is your final result. This is your final result and of course you could you could solve it further for yourself if you want. If you know the mathematical games, I do not know to play with this mathematics, right? And of course, what about the ROC? What about the ROC? So have a look over here, your A is this thing. Over here your A is this thing. So both are the same exponential j pi by 4 is not included exponential minus j pi by 4 is not included in the uh, ROC why because the the magnitude of the exponential is always 1 so you only have to check for r uh, 1 over 3 so in both the cases we have 1 over 3 we have a negative sign in the formula we have a negative sign over here so we could say that the the, the ROC for this function is that z absolute is greater than 1 over 3 and that is it and how do you draw it so you have this is your imaginary of z this is your real of z right if this is 1 by 3 radius circle so the ROC is the entire region outside of this circle similarly over here you have z 1 over 2 over there you have the entire z plane over here you have except z equal to 0 so you put you know something over here and then shared the entire for this you have the entire z plane right for this you have the entire z plane of course infinity we could not mention for this it is one greater than one over two so you could write one over two is a circle like this and the in the roc is something like this so i told you in the beginning as well you have to do what you have to check these two videos side by side this the examples video and the next or the previous so you could see whatever but by the way that's already recorded properties of roc so you see this side by side so you will understand it in an efficient way i finished this video over here this was just a simpler video but i said that i have used these examples in that video so let's say we have a little discussion over it see you in the next video very soon inshallah till then take care of yourselves and everyone around you do remember me in your prayers keep liking the videos and do subscribe to the channel as well goodbye